Welcome to the second part of the FIR filter lecture. Today, uh, we'll try to optimize the FIR implementation we saw in the last lecture. To recap, uh, let's look at the baseline FIR code. So um, we're computing an 11 taps filter. And uh, if we want to make a series of row registers passing down the data, uh, we can make a for loop and have each iteration copy data from the shift register array. And uh, if we're going to make a series of uh, multiplication and uh, addition, uh, we can also insert that into the same for loop, um, have each iteration perform multiplication between the shift register and C, and uh, add them together into the uh, variable ACC. By the way, um, this uh, multiplication and addition is uh, called MAC operation. The final cumulative value is written to the Y output and the function ends. In today's class, let's optimize the baseline FIR code we have just seen uh, with the uh, HLS compiler directives and the code refactoring. Given our baseline FIR code, one simple way of uh, executing this for loop is to first finish executing the first iteration, uh, that is, um, rec, read shift register, multiply, and add, and uh, wait for it to finish. And then we can start the uh, second iteration with these uh, two variables, uh, multiply, and add, and so on. Well, this is certainly possible. Um, assuming the iteration latency is 4, uh, the execution cycle uh, of the for loop would be 4 times 11 iterations, so um, 44 cycles. But uh, is it really necessary to wait for the previous iteration to finish and then start the next one? Um, can we start the next iteration anytime sooner? Well, the answer is yes. There's actually no dependency that stops you from performing these uh, two reads at cycle two. So, you know, rather than having it to wait until the fifth cycle. So we're going to perform our first optimization, uh, which is called loop pipelining. Loop pipelining overlaps the execution of multiple loop iterations uh, and starts later uh, iterations before the previous iterations finish. Um, this optimization allows parallel execution of the loop statements. Let's look at the pipeline schedule of MAC operation. After the first iteration is done reading C and the shift register and uh, proceed to do the addition, the second iteration will uh, start reading C and the shift register, uh, followed by the third iteration uh, doing the same on the third cycle. So at each cycle, readers, uh, multiplier, and adder will be processing some iteration without idling. Um, since uh, multiple processing elements are working in parallel, uh, this optimization increases the throughput of the whole circuit. Now, let me give you a quiz. Assuming the iteration latency is 4 and the initiation interval is 1 after pipelining, how many cycles are needed to process 11 taps? To solve this problem, um, let's look at the diagram. So at each cycle, we're going to process one tap. So at uh, cycle number 11, uh, we have started processing the 11th tap. So um, this will be uh, uh, iteration 11, and uh, it takes three more cycles to finish up iteration 11.
okay so the uh, total execution cycle will be 1 times 11 plus 3 so uh, 14 cycles does this make sense okay the same applies to the shift registers as well um, in a non-pipeline version of the shift registers uh, it'll read from register 9 and write to register 10 and then read from register 8 and the right to register 9 and so on but in a pipeline version uh, reading the next iteration of the shift registers is overlapped with the writing of the previous iteration uh, so the overall execution cycle is about two times smaller uh, compared to the non-pipeline version the Vitus HLS directive that tells the compiler to perform loop pipelining is pragma HLS pipeline ii equals the target initiation interval. Um, you'd usually put ii equals to 1, uh, but you may write down a bigger number as well. For example, uh, you can put the pragma here uh, to pipeline the filter tab loop. Uh, you can also simply write down uh, pragma HLS pipeline uh, without specifying the target II and the HLS tool will try to achieve the best II possible. Uh, for the location of the compiler directive, um, those of you who use OpenMP uh, might get a little confused here. Um, in OpenMP, you put the pragma above the loop you're optimizing. But in Vitus HLS, uh, you write the pragma below the loop you're optimizing. So yeah, you can put it uh, just after the filter tab loop. Now, uh, this is something that has been added to the recent version of the Vitus HLS tool. Um, even if the pipeline pragma is missing, uh, the Vitus HLS will synthesize the loop as if the pragma has been added. Uh, but I would still recommend that you explicitly specify the pipeline pragma. If you write it, the Vitus HLS will at least try to pipeline the loop to make the II equals to 1. If the compiler is unable to do so, uh, it will tell you why. But uh, if you don't put anything, it is possible that the tool might miss the opportunity altogether. This is the circuit that should be generated from pipeline. Since we have put down the pipeline pragma on the filter tab loop, we're going to start processing one tab each cycle. That is, um, we're going to accumulate the result of one multiplication between a shift register and the coefficients or tabs each cycle. Depending on the technology and the bit width of the variables, HLS uh, tool might insert additional registers uh, around the multiplier and the accumulator. But unfortunately, it turns out that the HLS does not succeed in generating this, uh, this circuit by simply adding a pipeline pragma. Um, let's look at the next slide. Um, this is the synthesis report. It will be generated if you press the green arrow synthesis button. The synthesis report tells us that the loop was pipelined, but it only achieved II equals to 2, not 1. This means that the generate circuit computes one tap every two cycles. Well, that's not very ideal, isn't it? Um, let's look at the reason why. The synthesis log, uh, or the uh, guidance tab on the bottom, tells us why HLS tool was not able to achieve II equals to 1. The, the message, um, unable to enforce a carry dependency, is a little bit uh, cryptic. But what it's saying is that it was unable to un overlap the reading and writing of shift registers across adjacent iteration. Um, since overlapping failed, it had to separate the read and write stage, and II became 2. So when you see a message like this, uh, you now have to think about if this is algorithmic problem or coding style problem. 
from the algorithm uh, itself. Uh, there is no problem copying the data from the previous iteration of ship's register to the next iteration and all doing all of this in parallel. So this is really a coding style problem. Um, HLS tool was not able to understand what we wanted to construct. Specifically, the problem is with this if clause. Um, HLS tool was unable to understand that writing x to ship to register uh, only happens at iteration 0. And uh, it was uh, kind of uh, over generalizing the register access pattern. So let's help HLS tool better understand what we want to do. There are two solutions to this problem. The first solution is explained in the textbook as code hoisting. Uh, what we're doing is extracting the i equals zero iteration out of the loop. The algorithmic behavior itself has not changed, but this coding cells helps HLS compiler better understand that copying input x into ship's register 0 only happens on the zeros iteration. Another uh, solution is to use ternary operator. Uh, if you see the baseline code, you're copying either x or shift register i minus 1 into shift register i. Copying x only happens at the i equals 0. So we have a ternary operator uh, choosing between these two. For the next line, uh, we're multiplying c uh, with either x or shift register i. Uh, multiplying x only happens at the i equals 0. So we have another ternary operator uh, choosing between these two. So these two coding styles um, help HLS tool uh, better understand what we want to implement. Now, feel free to pause the video here and uh, make sure that the baseline code and the refactored code is equivalent and that these two just have different coding style. When you're comfortable with, with this, um, please, please proceed to the next slide. And uh, keep in mind that uh, it's possible that future versions of Vitus may not need such code modification and may be able to achieve II of 1 by just putting down the pipeline pragma into the uh, baseline code. Let's look at the synthesis result after code refactoring. We can see that the HLS tool has successfully reduced the II down to 1. Let's also look at the execution time. Um, it takes 16 cycles to process one sample or 17 cycles per sample uh, if you're processing multiple samples. So compared to the baseline, it has reduced from 28 cycles to 17 cycles. So the total execution cycle uh, is now 600 times 17 or 10,200 cycles. And uh, if we compute the speed up from the baseline pipeline implementation uh, with II equals to 2, uh, it is currently 1.65x. Now, we have changed our code to improve the performance, but after code refactoring, it's always a good idea to run C simulation to verify correctness. Uh, please uh, click on the C simulation and wait for it to finish. Uh, if you see the result has passed, uh, you can go to the next slide. Uh, but uh, if you see that it has failed, please look back at your code and uh, double check if the transformed code is functionally equivalent to the uh, baseline code. Now, let's take a step back and evaluate our pipeline FIR implementation. Do you see any problem uh, with the circuit? Well, the problem is that this implementation computes only one tab, that is uh, only one multiplication and accumulate 
per cycle. But there are 11 modifications and 10 additions, right? Uh, so this brings up the question, if there's any way to perform all computation and all register shifts in parallel. Well, that is uh, certainly possible. Uh, what we want to apply is an optimization technique called loop unrolling. Loop unrolling is uh, replicating the body of a loop. It increases the parallelism and the throughput of the design. Um, you can adjust the amount of parallelism by changing the loop unrolling factor. Uh, this is the uh, number of iterations uh, being unrolled. This is a circuit diagram of a fully unrolled FIR filter. Uh, it processes one sample per clock cycle and uh, performs all register shifts, modification, and addition in parallel. Now, I just said that the loop unrolling increases the parallelism, but did I say the same thing for the uh, loop pipelining as well? Don't they both increase parallelism? So what's the difference between loop unrolling and loop pipelining? Well, in loop pipelining, um, different types of operators work in parallel on different stage of the computation. In loop unrolling, same type of operators work in parallel on different data set. So loop pipelining and loop unrolling are different parallelization strategies, and they often can be applied at the same time. Let's look at the timing diagram after adding loop unrolling on the filter tab loop. Now we are reading different coefficients and shift registers in parallel, doing the modification and addition in parallel as well. In the second cycle, uh, we're doing the same computation as the first iteration, but on a different input data set and the different shift register values, and doing the rest of the computation in the next cycle. So you can see that the loop on the filter tab has been unrolled and the loop on the samples as well as the filter tab loop are pipelined. Let's see how to code this. The compiler directive for unrolling a loop is pragma hless unroll factor. Um, you may specify the unroll factor if you want, uh, but for the filter tab loop, let's just fully unroll it by omitting the factor. So um, let's write down pragma hless unroll on the filter tab loop. If you unroll the loop, uh, it means that you're accessing all the shift registers in parallel. To make this possible, uh, you need to make the shift register array into individual registers, uh, not part of some uh, random access memory. Uh, the compiler directive to do this is pragma hls array partition uh, variable name uh, complete. Uh, previous, this pragma was mandatory, uh, but latest Vitus hls compiler uh, might be able to automate this. Um, I'll explain the array partition pragma more in details later. Uh, for now, uh, let's assume that the, this pragma goes together uh, with the unroll pragma. Now we need to pipeline the sample loop. Uh, but uh, I won't give you the answer. Uh, I'll leave it as an exercise. The sample loop is currently in fir underscore test dot cpp. Uh, please make necessary modification to pipeline the sample loop uh, while unrolling the filter tab loop. Uh, I'll give you a hint. You need to modify both fir test.cpp 
and FIR.CPP files, uh, change the location of the sample loop, and uh, put pipeline pragma on the sample loop. All right. Uh, so I'll just show you the result if you make the correct modification. Uh, the synthesis result will show you that the initiation interval is now 1. Um, the sample loop is now in the kernel file fir.cpp. Uh, so the whole execution cycle is shown in the report um, 606 cycles. The result after running the cosim uh, will also be 606 cycles. If you compute the speed up uh, from the baseline implementation, uh, it'll be 27.7x, uh, which is a huge improvement. So um, after making the modification on your own, uh, please check if you can achieve this number. Uh, so this is the summary of today's lecture. Loop pipelining uh, overlaps the execution of multiple loop iterations, whereas the uh, loop unrolling replicates the loop body and processes uh, several iterations in parallel. And uh, loop pipelining and loop unrolling uh, may often be applied at the same time. Um, finally, um, I'd like to remind everyone that it's a good practice to run C simulation after you do any code modification and uh, make sure that your new code is correct. All right, so that's it for today. In the next class, uh, we'll take the optimized design we created today and uh, try to port it to F1 instance and run it on board. So I'll see you in the next class.